So in this chapter, chapter six of the telecom and one security, we will discuss and talk and explain the data link control and multiplexing. Okay. <coughs> data link control module. Now you have a physical interface on your card and you are connected to the network. The media will allow the data that you are transmitting to be transmitted. But imagine if you are subscribed, let's say, and the speed you are paying for, for one, maybe you are getting 100 megabits per second, and you have one user only. Is this efficient? You are paying so much money and you have only one site or one user. Or it's better if you are able to do multiplexing Multiple users, they can send out simultaneously. It's much better. Okay, so this is why it's better to have multiplexing. Okay. Now, physical interface cards provide means by which a stream of data can be transmitted, either synchronously or asynchronously onto a transmission medium. Synchronously meaning that the sender and receiver, they are synchronized. Asynchronous, asynchronous. I think you studied this in your crypto class. They are not synchronized. Asynchronous is the opposite of synchronized. But the problem here is that we need a function to do a flow control and error control. This is done by the data link control protocol. Your data link control protocol. It will do error detection and it will do flow control. And they are generally used for synchronous transmission. So here I have a sender, receiver, or transmitter, and receiver. Uh, we have the uh, data link control module. It is sending the data over the transmission link, and it is adding control bits on the header and trailer. Header, sorry, header is here. Trailer is here. So each frame is supplemented with control bits that allow the two sides to cooperate to deliver the data reliably. The control bits are added by the sender of the frame. So, uh, the control bits are the same as the post envelope we have These are an example, but control bits it will depend on your depend on your protocol. So it's not one thing. No, of course. Each protocol has different control bits. TCP is different than I than uh, UDP. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll show you some examples. For the flow control, what is it? It's a technique for assuring that a transmitting entity does not overwhelm a receiving entity. I and mean, the transmitter is not sending data at higher speed, while the receiver can only accept lower speed. So it will be, the receiver will be overwhelmed. We don't want that. It prevents buffers from overflowing. It is necessary when data is being sent faster than it can be processed by the receiver. It's one of the primary functions performed at the data link layer of the OSI. Flow control, error detection. What are the two types of errors? We have lost frames. Either the frame is lost, or we have a frame coming but too much noise or damaged. What is the solution? What will the receiver do if it receives a damaged frame? It will just ask for retransmit. It will not start calculating the frame and start to repair and yeah, not efficient of course. okay so collectively these two controls are called arq automatic repeat request repeat request okay always coming this question what is arq what is arq after three months oh you see arq what is it so this is arq very simple these are the techniques used for error control it will do error detection, positive acknowledgement if everything is okay, 
retransmission after time out, negative acknowledgement and retransmission. Also, when the sender sends something and wait till he till to receive acknowledgement by the receiver that oh we receive this print, it will wait forever. Time out. After some time, plus, it will consider that this was not delivered. Or the receiver will consider that I did not receive this, it will request so, okay? So it's not gonna wait forever. Motivation for multiplexing, I just mentioned one of them. If you have higher speed media, why don't you efficiently utilize it? Allow multiple transmitters to send. And everyone, all the inputs will be multiplexed into the same media, okay? And also, mostly and for end users, they don't need really high speed. So, and if you have fiber optic cable, imagine, and you have only like 10 users using it and you are paying, you know, this cable is uh, very fast and you have, it's a point to point link, you are paying it to uh, the telecom company $10,000 a month, and then five users are sending. It's not efficient. So you better allow other departments to use the same link, okay? Or you allow other, or your other sites to utilize this, okay? This is just a simple example, but it's more uh, complicated than this, all right? Here, how it, it is done. You have n number of inputs. You have one link. You are divided. You are multi, you are multiplexing, multiplex like multiplying. Okay. So you are combining them into one link, one transmission. When they arrived at the end, we have the D multiplexer, D max. So here we have max. We have D max. The D max will again separate them. We have different methods for multiplexing. We had FDM, frequency division multiplexing. We have time division multiplexing. And they are different. Let me talk a little bit about time division multiplexing, or first of all, frequency division multiplexing. Here, let's say you have a frequency F. You are dividing this frequency into smaller Fs. F1, F2, F3, F4, and then you are assigning for each use, for each input, for each transmitter, one F. F1, you are F2, F3, F4. So they are each one is sending at the same time, but they are using a portion of the bandwidth of the frequency. This is one method. The other method is time division multiplexing. You are allowing each input to deliver to de, to use the full capacity, the full channel, the full bandwidth, but for short time, for slot of time. So everyone is sending like after. Everyone, the first one will send, you will use the full speed, then the next one, then the third one, then the fourth one. Okay? Which one is better? We cannot tell. It depends on why you are using it for what. Okay? You are using it for what applications. Okay? Frequency division multiplexing of voice and TV signals. This is was used by telephone transmission in the old days. For many years, people were using FDM, frequency division multiplexing. Nowadays, it is declining, but it's still used for television, television distribution systems at the time of this book. Okay. The analog television signals fits comfortably into a 6 megahertz bandwidth. We already talked about this, remember? It was 6 megahertz to send a video, remember? So they given, given the enormous bandwidth of coaxial cable, which coaxial cable can 
handle 500 megahertz. So I, uh, each channel is getting is using six megahertz. So I'm not utilizing the full capacity of the cable. So it's better to do multiplexing and I can allow different inputs. Okay. So multiple TV, TV signals can be simultaneously carried using FDM. This is one example. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is all included. We are talking here about now we are we, we, we are we are okay with that. We are now we are going to another topic, multiplexing. Of course, when you are multiplexing, you are multiplexing everything. Okay. FDM examples is the ADSL. ADSL uses frequency division multiplex modulation, FDM, to exploit the one megahertz capacity of twisted pair, your twisted pair cable. Asymmetric, because ADSL provides, ADSL is asymmetric because down speed is different than upload speed, correct? You don't have upload and download as the same speed. Yeah, maybe some industry, they have different uh, type of connection that will allow them. But for ADSL, always the, up, the upload is smaller than or less than the, slower than the download. Or we call it upstream and downstream, okay? When you see downstream, don't get panicked. It's just, just the same. The telecom, they like to use these words, okay? Provides a perfect fit for internet access. ADSL is good for internet, and ADSL is using FDM. Okay. This is another explanation. This is this is how it is done. The time division multiplexing. We have inputs. We have buffers, and then each each input like this is number three, number two, number one. Then again we will repeat. Number three will have full bandwidth. Number two full bandwidth. When number three is sending, number two is not sending. By time no, slots, no. by time slot, we are assigning time slot. This is uh, but. For TDM frame structure, this is how it, it looks like. One, two, up to N. Each one is delivering at time slot. And they are arriving in the same order. Digital carrier system. This is an example also. It's a long, you can open this from your PowerPoint, by the way. I think it's the colors, something happened to the colors. I can open it from my uh, computer. This is important. Yeah. No problem, no problem, no problem. Digital carrier system. It's a long distance carrier system designed to transmit voice signals over high capacity transmission links, such as optical fiber, coaxial cable, and microwave. We are talking about big companies, telecom, com telecom companies. They, are, they already have cables. They need to utilize. They are not going to change everything. So they need to come up with technology to be used in their existing infrastructure. Because TV was there before the internet. 
long time cable TV is there. Okay, long time. So long distance carrier system designed to transmit voice signals over high capacity transmission links, such as optical fiber, coaxial cable, and microwave. Evolution of these networks to digital involved adoption of synchronized TDM transmission structure. structure. So this is about the TDM. Okay. So we go to the next slide. Cellular and cordless telephone systems. This is about your mobiles. So we have the frequency division multiple axis FDMA. Here, radio spectrum used to connect multiple uh, connect mobile devices and cell towers because your mobile is not talking to the other mobile directly. It will go to a cell tower. And towers talk to towers. Then it will come to you. Okay. Here they are using uh, frequency channels. And each one is capable of carrying one call. That's why it is FDMA. Frequency, div div uh, frequency division, multiple axis. So it's divided into frequencies. And we have the frequency division duplexing, FDD. Here, two distinct frequencies. One carries uplink channel to the cell tower, and the sec second one, second one is for downlink, downlink from the tower to the mobile. But this is the old technology. They started using time. Time division, multiple access, TDMA, and even more other technologies are there. And code division, multiple access, CDMA, and cellular networks. That's why in the, before, if you get like a mobile phone from the US, it will not work in other, another country because of the technology used for communication. But now everybody moved to 4G technology or 5G, then if you buy a phone anywhere, it will work. Yeah, the technology will work unless your phone is locked. Okay. Last slide is the summary. 
we talked about flow control, error control, why we need multiplexing and digital carrier system, cellular and cordless. By the way, as I told you before, now we just said cordless or wireless. Later on in this semester, maybe in November or October, we'll come back again to and talk about 1G, 2Gs, 3Gs, 4G. So it's like this course is designed like this. First, they give you a general information, then again, we come and dig deep into it, okay? Let's go back to the ADSL. ADSL is your uh, internet connection. So, uh, you know, when you, uh, you have from tele telecom company at home, you have ADSL connection to the internet, right? Yeah. So here they are using the frequency division modulation. Because you are using a twisted pair. The cable is like the internet cable, right? Twisted. This cable here, they are telling you it's capable of one megahertz. Okay. Uh, and it is using asymmetric. We call it asymmetric because it can only provide, you can get download speed higher than upload speed. That's why they, they describe it as asymmetric. So the meaning of asymmetric. Then uh, slide number seven. When, uh, we go back to slide number seven. Okay. 